So here's this thing about driving some of the most remote land in all the earth. For three days, I have had no cellular service, no showers, no connection to the outside world. And it's been the most incredible thing to be able to disconnect from the world. Hey everyone, my name's Alex. I'm an ex-medical student who sold all his belongings in 2012 to travel around the world. 50 countries and the adventure continues. All right, welcome to 5 a.m. I have been on the road for about an hour. And look at this, snow. Uh, always scary on the road for the biker. I stayed last night at a place where all the tours stay at and they're all going to geysers this morning. And I wouldn't know how to get there if I didn't follow them. So today I'm in a small little caravan trying to keep up. Unfortunately, they go a lot faster than I do. So I just have to try to guess where they're going. They're trying to make it for some uh, geysers for sunrise. I gotta be so careful on snow. It's very slippery. Whoa. Slippery, just like I said. Whoa, almost lost it there. Welcome to 6 a.m. on uh, day three crossing the Altiplano. And today we have ice and snow, which is terrible. I've already fallen twice. I think this is certainly the most dangerous day so far. It is not easy going in these parts and luckily I'm okay. Somebody saw one of my videos and they actually commented, why are you doing what you're doing? Like, like why? Today, that question why is a big, big part of what I keep asking myself. Why the heck am I doing this? This is so ridiculous. There's so much effort that it takes. It's so risky, it's dangerous. I could get really, really hurt. Things could go horribly, horribly wrong. I don't know why I do it, to be honest with you. It's like dog bark. Why does a cat meow? I don't know. There's so many things that are unexplainable. Man, this is intense. I don't have an answer for uh, who, who gave me that comment of why? Why would I do something like this? I just don't. <laughs> so you can see the view though is amazing. Look at that. But there's nobody around to help me pick up the bike. Ever. Never. There's nobody ever here. Anyway, just got to continue on the icy road. An ice road motorcycle biker. <laughs> Check it out. We got a geyser over here. I cannot believe it. Finally made it to the geysers. Jeez, what a nightmare to get here. I really wish I was in a nice warm house. Sipping some hot drink right now. That'd be nice. Would be nice. So the good news is I made it to the geysers. The bad news is I made it a little late during the day because I had an hour delay for a mechanical issue I had to fix. Anyway, but I'm here. That's what matters. Now the problem with being here is that there's a bunch of sulfur in the air. Just toxic gas. So you don't want to be here for too long. 10 to 15 minutes is probably the right amount. 10 minutes left. Better make it count. Oh my gosh, that is so loud. No idea how it's gonna turn out on the camera, but right now, it is like ear damaging levels. It's crazy. So crazy how loud it is. It's cool though. It's been a difficult day. The last three days have been pretty rough. If you're going to do this during the wet season on the motorcycle, be prepared. It will be a challenge. You'll have the best time of your life, you'll have the worst time of your life. It's going to test your patience, it's going to test you physically, mentally. All the experience you've ever gained in life will be used here. So here is everything that you need to know about driving or traveling the Bolivian Altiplano. Number one, there are no services for about 250 to 300 miles. You'll be very alone sometimes. The roads are 
terrible. There's mud, there's snow, there's ice, there's desert, there's sand, there's mud, loose gravel, hard pack gravel, everything in between. You will have some of the most stunning and gorgeous views you have ever seen in your life. It's that simple. Salt Flat, Extinct Volcanoes, Geysers, Red Lake, Green Lake, Blue Lake, Mountain Tops, Snow, Desert, Dry, Heat, Cold, Hot, everything. So traveling from north to south of Bolivian Altiplano will take you about three days. If you really take your time, it'll take you about four days. It is the most challenging place on earth for a motorcycle ride. This is the epitome of adventure riding. Can you do this on the street bike? You could. It's gonna suck. And it's gonna take you a really, really long time. It'll be very dangerous for you. If you're taking a tour, congratulations, you made the best choice for traveling this part of the world. If you're silly like myself and you wanna take a motorcycle, prepare yourself. It is going to be crazy. If you're watching this vlog, you know how difficult this has been. You can see it on my face. I am tired, I am beat up, my neck hurts, my back hurts. Everything is in pain right now. I've dropped a bike more here than I have anywhere else in the world. The entire time I'm driving this way and basically I'm just doing this, I'm squirreling like this. For anybody who drives motorcycles, you know how bad that is. And with a fully loaded bike with all the gear I have, it's even worse. So my recommendation, visit, absolutely do not miss this place. You go from like the surface of Mars to lakes, the geysers to snow, everything in between. Do this on the motorcycle, make sure you pick the dry season and make sure you pick the right route. My mistake during this entire thing was that I picked the wrong route and that's because I got lost because I got a huge rain and hailstorm and I couldn't see a single thing. I had to turn off my phone, I had to turn off my GPS and I had to kind of go by instinct. The roads that looked like they were main roads were not actually main roads. You have your phone and your GPS on at all times. This is the route that you should do. I'm gonna put up a map right now. You go from Uyuni to San Cristobal all the way down south. You stay to the right and you basically just zigzag your way all the way down to San Pedro Atacama. The route that I did was the same thing. Down the bottom and then this is where the rainstorm came and I got lost and I went out to the left. To the left is the worst thing you can do during the wet season. There's a great lagoon and it's beautiful and fantastic, but during the wet season, those roads are the worst. So I went totally to the left side and I went all the way down and I cut back into the main road. That portion right there basically took me two days. What you should also expect is not to take a shower for three days. Number one, because there's no services for three days. Number two, where there's showers, there's no hot water. There's no electricity. There's nothing, you can't even charge your phone. You can charge your phone if you're lucky in one place that might have a solar panel and have a little thing that you can charge in there, but you have to wait in line with everybody else. Anyway, that's my spiel for now. Uh, behind me is actually the green lake called the Laguna Verde. And I'm gonna head down there and there's a valley of Dali. And you can barely see it on the very edge over there. There's an extinct volcano there as well. I'm gonna get back on the road, have a quick snack, water up, and uh, enjoy the ride, enjoy the view.